So hello, this is the JavaScript Special Interest Group Weekly Meeting. It's August 18th, 2016. I am Patrick Rogers, Senior Program Manager with Office 365. We've got a great call this week. We're going to talk about some of the activities that have been going on in the Special Interest Group. And then we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the newly released uh, developer preview for the SharePoint framework, which I think is really exciting to get that out there and get that uh, into the world. And I've also uh, got some ideas. I want to talk about how I'm going to help uh, hopefully help drive some of you guys to get involved in that and uh, get those kind of things going out there in the community as well to give you a little bit of incentive. So uh, let's jump right in and get started. Uh, we start off every week kind of explaining who we are and what we do. We're the special interest group focused on JavaScript and client-side development, and we live in the larger SharePoint Patterns and Practices program. We carry this idea of worldwide one team, so anybody anywhere in the world can join and participate, whether it's through the social channels, whether it's through submitting code, or whether it's attending these weekly meetings. Um, everyone's welcome wherever you are in the world, whoever you are, please join us if you have interest uh, uh, in special or uh, in client side development, and then uh, you know the larger patterns and practices program. If you have sort of a more general interest in SharePoint, and we'll be spinning up more of these special interest groups as interest dictates. We have three main ideas for the team. The first is the elastic team. Um, we understand that some weeks you'll have a lot of time to participate and other weeks or months less. I'm a great example of that recently. I've had a lot of other uh, work stuff going on, so I haven't been as involved as I'd hoped to be. We'll talk about that uh, briefly uh, later. Uh, we also remain very community driven. So when you have uh, you know, feedback, when you have ideas, we're open to all of those. So it's it's ideas about making our documentation better, making our code better, missing methods, you know, just improving that general experience. So we're always open to getting that feedback uh, from, you know, you as the community who attends these calls as well as listens to the calls and participates on Yammer or Gitter. And we're all about enabling developers, and there's two sides to that. The first side is the folks that show up and participate. We want those folks to have a great experience joining these calls, submitting code, getting their questions answered. And so that's sort of the, the folks that, that – the very smaller percentage that dive in and participate. And then the larger percentage is going to be those folks that consume our work. And we also want those folks to have a great experience consuming our libraries, using our work, and um, – that's the dog. Can we just double check the mute on everybody for me, if you don't mind? Thanks. I'll do that. Um, so, but enabling all developers to have a great experience, whether you're contributing to the work or consuming the work, uh, we want all those folks to also have a great experience. So, again, very open, all are welcome, and then. Uh, you know, if you have time, we absolutely welcome all your contributions. So looking at the two links at the bottom, that's a link to our Yammer, which is still the place to go for uh, right now. Um, likely that will be adjusting soon. We'll have more details on that, uh, honestly, once we figure it out. And then the bottom link there is to our GitHub repo where you can find our code and you can uh, participate. And it's got links out to our various social channels. Check out the wiki. It has a lot of great information there as well on getting started. So I do want to thank, as we do every week, all our contributors. Jorn, I'd still love to get a full name for you if you're out there and listening. Um, but thanks to everybody that uh, has contributed and will contribute in the future. You make this program possible, and it's really exciting to see all the great work uh, that has been going on. Um, I did want to mention, I know uh, we'll talk about this later, uh, there's a couple of pull requests out there that I haven't merged yet. Uh, that's simply been a time constraint, not a problem with the pull request. So we'll be adding some folks to this list uh, for next week's call. Moving on, our agenda for this week, we'll talk quickly about Yammer and Gitter. It's been fairly quiet uh, last week. Do the weekly stand-up, talk as we always do about the opportunities for contribution, and then we'll have a team discussion this week centered around the public preview. I want to walk through uh, sort of getting started with that public preview, and then we'll talk about a, just kind of a few other things that have been going on, but really focus this week on the release of that public preview and getting folks a chance to, to get started with that and get involved and start uh, – creating some cool web parts. So this week, uh, we've had some good uh, sort of general discussions and questions on Yammer and Gitter. Uh, those have been great. Uh, I'll sort of address it now. I haven't been able to participate as much as I've uh, 
done in the past or wanted to. I've been really busy with some uh, other stuff, uh, actual work stuff, which is kind of crazy. But um, do it's great to see the community kind of pitch in and help each other out. Um, I'm trying to get a little bit more involved uh, through the end of this week and a little bit the beginning of next week. We do have a couple of blog posts have gone out. Uh, 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 Shanta, again, put some uh, blog posts there in the Yammer. If you haven't been checking out his series on using the uh, core library, do uh, check that out. And then there are some issues and pull requests that, uh, to be super transparent, I haven't had a chance to look at in detail. Um, but I'll look at those um, before, uh, let's say, uh, the end of this week. Um, I'll try and look at those. So don't think uh, those are being neglected. Um, I just, uh, it's been a time time crunch for me. Uh, so then down at the bottom, you've got a link again to the Yammer and then a link as well to the Gitter. If, uh, you know, those are both great forums if you have general questions and if, you know, just sort of discussions, want to ask a question or how do I get started or you're having issues, that's a great place to start. And uh, myself and others will we'll try and help you out as best we can uh, with that. So the next slide here, what's been going on this week? The public tools preview is live. There's, uh, it's the dev stack, so you get to play with the Yeoman template, you get to build web parts, and you can do all that right now. It's on localhost or, and I believe you guys were already having the discussion on a dev tenant as well right now. You can actually put the your code up into SharePoint. So it's not fully released for production yet, uh, but you can uh, play with that stuff in a dev tenant um, as well as on localhost just to uh, sort of start to learn the stack. And hopefully, for those of you that have been participating with us in the special interest group, a lot of it is going to be very familiar um, without sort of letting the cat out of the bag. We've been trying over the last months uh, to sort of prep folks for what was coming uh, without being able to tell you. So now that it's out, hopefully things will feel very familiar and you'll be able to be productive very quickly in that new framework. I think it's really exciting. I think there's a lot of great opportunities and we're going to talk about that uh, in much more detail during the discussion part. I did get a blog post out this week on how we generate documentation. I've still got the webpack trick that I talked about last week to do that blog post. And I've been working on the node console app blog post. And that is almost done, but it's a funny story for all these blog posts I go through and I do all the steps that I'm writing down to sort of validate them. And it helps me get screenshots and code snippets and things organized. And so I have the, the console app sample I did first to figure all this out and debugging and everything works. And but when I tried to recreate all the steps, it no longer works. So I'm trying to figure out what thing I've done differently between the two places. So that's very close to being done. And as soon as I uh, get whatever my issue is in the, in the one project sorted, I'll get that blog post out uh, for folks as well. Um, and I'll be sure to put in there whatever the gotcha is um, that I've run into. Uh, so also this week, I did get a chance. I actually wrote a few lines of code um, besides answering a million emails and I fixed a few bugs. So we talked about there's a bug in batching in Node. That's fixed, um, not yet merged to dev. And then there's a few errors uh, I also fixed um, that I found while debugging in the console app that works for debugging. So a few little things I did want to mention. I haven't had as much time lately to uh, participate in this due to some ongoing stuff here at work, but uh, this is a great opportunity. I wanted to highlight this for folks that might be looking to get a little more deeply involved in uh, the special interest group or patterns and practices in general. Um, a great play, great time uh, to step up, kind of uh, maybe help drive to completion some of, like I said, I know there's some issues out there I haven't had a chance to look at. Um, the, the pull requests, I still am the one that has to merge those, but um, you know the issues or just generally kind of looking uh, through those sorts of things, it's a great chance uh, if there's anybody looking to get a little bit more involved, get a little bit more visibility on some of that stuff uh, to step up and, and take a little bit uh, of an initiative there um, while I'm a little bit uh, not as involved um, as 
I typically had been. So uh, great opportunity there. Just wanted to highlight that if anyone's interested. I also wanted to mention I'm going to be out next week, but you're going to have a fabulous guest host. Vesa has agreed to host the call next week, and so we, the call will go on, and it'll be Vesa, and likely by then you'll have plenty of awesome questions about SharePoint Framework. And Vesa and others will be there to help out with those. So the call will happen next week, but you won't get to listen to my lovely voice. You will get to listen to Vesa's lovely voice. So uh, last slide here before we get to the team discussion. Opportunities for contribution. Um, the top three haven't changed from last week. You all know what they are. Um, but the bottom one, I wanted to highlight this. So this is... Uh, an idea I had uh, while I was thinking about how to get folks kind of to jump into the SharePoint framework and develop some stuff, I want to encourage everybody, write a web part um, in the new SharePoint framework, and if you want to, and I encourage anybody who wants to, to do this, let uh, myself know, or for next week, let Vesa know, and if you want to uh, show it off on this call, I'm really happy to let folks get on here, discuss the work they've done, um, we sort of did this with the dev kitchens that we did um, during the pre-release phase, and it was really uh, pretty impressive to see what a lot of folks came up with, stuff you know that I, I would never have thought of or the other folks would never have thought of and some really cool scenarios. So I think this is a great opportunity. If you want to write a web part, show it off on this call. Uh, we can do that uh, as early as next week. Uh, I'll work with Vesa to coordinate how that's going to happen. But reach out to us uh, on Yammer or Gitter um, and you know, make sure to tag either myself or Vesa. Make sure to include Vesa at least for next week. But I think this will be a really cool way to get to show off your work and highlight kind of what you've been doing and sort of give everybody else in the community some ideas. So, uh, and obviously, Patrick, yep. that's pretty much what we do uh, in the monthly community calls uh, in the BNP anyway, as, as showing a, as a final part of the, uh, well, half an hour at least, there's always the demo part. And that's actually, that would be a great way for other people to learn in these weekly calls to actually have a look on what people have been doing, what they've been facing. Um, and covering the individual samples. That's a, that's a really great idea. And it's always better that it would be community people doing that because even though, yes, we can show some of the stuff what we have, usually there's a slightly alternative thinking and reasoning and, and, all of, and, and new ideas from the community side, which is great. Yep, absolutely. And definitely it's going to be a lot of uh, folks are going to see stuff that we haven't seen. We're going to get great feedback out of that, but also uh, the whole community is going to get to learn from the different tips and tricks that, that folks are going to develop um, as you know, we all learn the new framework and it, it evolves um, because they are very receptive to feedback as well. So if you have real problems, you can report those, of course. But do write a web part, do show it off on this call. I want to kind of highlight all the great work uh, folks in this community are doing. So very happy, again, to sort of show that stuff off uh, as much as I can from my side. And that, uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but I've mentioned it the last few weeks. That goes as well if you're out there writing blogs and things like that. Um, do let us know because uh, we want to, you know, again, kind of give you some visibility as much as as much as we can, either on these calls or, uh, you know, I'm happy to tweet stuff out for, you know, the, the folks that are following me and, and things like that. But let's get into the team discussion. So let me get. Uh, so if you haven't been yet to the new GitHub site. Um, if you go to github.com slash SharePoint, that is now us, which is very exciting. Um, that is the official repo, going to be the official, um, what's this level called, an org, right? So this is going to be the official org for uh, all the new SharePoint uh, open source stuff that's coming. And right now there's one open project, so you can go into the dev docs. And this will walk you through welcome. Um, updates, how to provide feedback either through user voice or Stack Exchange. You'll also see folks are submitting issues directly here to this uh, repo. Um, so lots of ways to provide feedback, which I think is great. But the really exciting stuff is out here in the wiki. And in this wiki, if you haven't checked this out, this really walks you through getting started uh, with the SharePoint framework, it has some hands-on labs. There's six hands-on labs right now from, from sort of the very basic getting started with a web part to, to talking to SharePoint to serving through these different things. Um, 
Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you do write a web part and want to show it on this, on this call, uh, bonus points if you actually use the JavaScript core library in your web part. Just, uh, I think, you know, that would make it extra cool if, uh, you know, you wanted to be extra cool. But, uh, so this is great to walk through this wiki and see these things. And I just want to, I'm going to very briefly just show you guys stepping through. Um, so set up your developer tenant. Um, I'm going to show you should up, set up your machine real quick just to show you. Um, this is all going to be very familiar, again, hopefully for folks that have been with us since the beginning, walking you through the, the all the same sorts of things. The only thing that's really different is down here at the bottom. This is the new public Yeoman generator for SharePoint. So you'll need to install that as sort of a first step to getting started with this stuff. So if you've already set up all your dev tools, you've got Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio and Commander and all these things installed or uh, the, whatever you would, the same things on Mac, um, this is kind of what you need to focus on is running this NPM to get the new Yeoman generator. So I've already done that. That's going to take you a few minutes to do. So I've done that uh, already on my machine to kind of skip the time. And then it starts off with a Hello World web part. And again, these are very step-by-step -step tutorials. I think it's going to be very easy, but I wanted to walk through at least the first one with you guys, uh, you folks, so everybody could kind of see what uh, you know what to expect and what the experience is going to be like. So you've got here a little message at the top that is kind of reminding you this is currently in preview and things could change. So uh, you know, just be aware of that. But generally, things are pretty set. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to this folder here. And this is my demo four folder, which may or may not be the fourth demo in uh, a series of demos. But so this will walk you through setting up your dev environment. So we've already done that. Create a project directory. We've already done that. And our next step here is to create a new web part project. And so this is going to use our Yeoman generator. And for those of you that might look at the earlier recordings, this is going to be very similar what uh, you saw kind of in the very early preview bits I was showing in those calls. But it's a different name, and it's also a little bit uh, more polished experience now. So this is going to start up um, our little Yeoman generator. I've already installed the generator, as I said earlier. So don't forget that step. So we'll get this. Uh, Get this started up. So it's going to come in here, and again, it's going to ask us these questions. Uh, if you've used Yeoman before, this is going to be familiar. So that's my solution name. Um, I'm great with using the current folder. Uh, Hello World is great. All these things are great, except uh, one thing I wanted to highlight. Uh, if you remember, before you had choices of no framework or React, they've added the option to use Knockout which uh, I think is really great. It also helps show uh, the flexibility of the framework for you to use you know, your other components, whether it's React, Knockout, uh, Angular, et cetera, things like that. Um, but React and Knockout are kind of the two, uh, I, I really hesitated to say work best, but have been most tested uh, within the framework. So you can use any framework or any uh, you know, sort of templating engine you like, Maybe you like handlebars or something like that. Those will all work, but React and Knockout have really sort of been put through the paces a little bit more. Uh, so that's going to create, that's going to take a little while. So I'm going to go to a little folder I have called Demo3, which is already a project I've created. And the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to do code dot, which is going to open up Visual Studio Code from that folder. And so this is uh, a very raw uh, project. I haven't done anything in here that isn't generated by Yeoman. So um, you can see here all the different uh, folders that get created. This is very much like what you saw before. Um, you've got your VS Code settings and tasks. There's the dist folder. All of this uh, you've likely seen before. The one thing I want to point out is source. So source is, again, where the source files are located. There's localization. And then you've got your web part uh, component files and things like that here. So you've got some SAS modules, some, some CSS, uh, sort of compiled CSS stuff. This is also how the Office Fabric was done. Um, so you can easily incorporate Office Fabric 
styles into these SAS uh, files, do you call them modules, SAS files, um, to get uh, these sorts of things styled up to look like uh, the Office Fabrics. So you can incorporate those things very easily. Um, you've got your manifest. Again, this is all very similar to what uh, you would have seen in the sort of preview bits I previewed before. Uh, but then if you, you worry about well, how do I write code, how do I start doing stuff, that's your web part file. So you've got here my, again, I'm hello world web part. So this is all TypeScript, as we're all familiar with. So again, base client web part, this is unchanged from the preview bits. There's still a single render method. And again, we're getting hand, handed a DOM element. Um, so we're being told, this is your DOM element to render into. And so this is, again, very vanilla, very basic. We're just setting the inner HTML using a string. But uh, this is where if you were using React or you were using Knockout or you were using anything else, uh, you could do different things to render into that, right? So you could render via React, you could render via Knockout into that DOM element instead of just setting the string. So we're setting things, uh, creating sort of a just some HTML that's going to get put into our sort of parent element. And then we have some property pane settings. So you've got one here called description. And you'll see up here, I just want to point this out, and you'll see why in a second, this properties.description um, is actually tied to the property in the property pane. So that's kind of exciting. And then you've got sort of your default imports and your default styles and things as well there. So let me pull back my command prompt. Now I'm going to run gulp serve. So this command is unchanged, again, from the early preview. But you can now use this locally. And I'm going to run this. And what I'm going to get is that development dashboard that has been uh, sort of improved and is uh, a little bit better to work with, and it's gonna allow me to, to play with my web part and use my web part um, as, uh, you know, as a sort of a development environment. And there we go. Took a second to fire up there. I should have started this while I was talking. Uh, but so in the preview, we're gonna look at, there's got some new features in there that are going to allow uh, you to sort of explore the framework a little bit more as it relates to building uh, dynamic uh, pages and things like that. So here's our uh, workbench. Um, so you can see it's on what amounts to localhost. Uh, what's funny, this computer isn't actually a Surface. But so I can add, here's my hello web part. So I've got buttons, and you can see all my text. And then I can also edit the properties of that web part. And so you can see that when I update this, you get a live update in the web part. And so that'll work with other properties. You can bind those things up and get that to work. So uh, kind of very cool on the sort of dynamic rendering. It allows you to really see how your web part is going to behave um, as it's being edited, uh, things like that. So uh, again, this is all local. I don't have access from right here to SharePoint data, but uh, an interesting idea that somebody could explore that I haven't had a chance to. Since uh, we've got Node running, you could do something around getting data using Node, sort of in a local web service. Um, or you can also set this up and deploy it to your dev tenant and get uh, mm -hmm. your uh, data via the dev tenant. So once it's embedded in SharePoint, you would get data you know, exactly as you expect from SharePoint. One of the things I wanted to show you, so you've got now a mobile preview. Um, here, uh, right on this workbench, so you can look at a mobile preview. You can set the uh, width and height. You can rotate the screen and see how your things are going to look on mobile. This is an iPhone 5. And you can also do the same for tablet, so you can sort of see how your sites are going to look uh, in the workbench. And this gives you just uh, a very quick way to go through and uh, look at you know, how's my web part laying out? Are things looking the way I want? Um, things like that. So I've got a question. Any way to test data SharePoint uh, from the local workbench? Uh, right now, uh, no. The uh, push is going to be for you to mock up data for working in the workbench. But there's also, if you step through those tutorials, 
there's ways to deploy this to SharePoint such that the SharePoint, the manifest in SharePoint is going to point back to your local host machine and the web part will run from local host, right? So you're serving the files from local host, but it's, it's the JavaScript is executing in the browser in SharePoint. So you'll be able to do live edits, edit your, your code, hit save, the gulp serve is going to process reload uh, the files, and then you could refresh your browser, and it'll again pick up those changes from what amounts to your local machine acting as a CDN. So there's no requirement for mocking, um, right? Looking for folks to mock, but uh, a lot of folks I think will work in that sort of web part, you know, manifest in SharePoint pointing to localhost. Pardon me, as I think how a lot of sort of the development cycle is going to end up being. So again, that's a very basic web part. It's your Hello World web part. And in that article, they step you through all the steps, running the Gulp serve, all the things I've shown you. And then they actually go through here at the bottom and really explain in a lot more detail um, these different methods and classes and what the different property panes are. There's been a lot of work on improving the property pane experience. So there's different uh, types. So there's text fields, drop downs, things like that, um, toggles, and uh, really improving the overall experience. So all of this, it's going to explain for you what the manifest does. So uh, the manifest is what sort of defines all the parts of your solution, uh, very similar to uh, Webpack. Uh, in fact, this probably gets rolled into Webpack behind the scenes. And then looking at your preview code uh, in SharePoint. So if you're actually trying to look at this in SharePoint, remember you need to load unsafe scripts because those scripts being served from local host aren't, uh, you know, it's a uh, cores, you know, cross resource issue. So load those unsafe scripts and you'll get to play with your web parts right there in your SharePoint site. So you can see that's all just the getting started first tutorial. And then there's a whole bunch of other tutorials. If I go back up to the top, so talking to SharePoint, again, that is not going to use the uh, JS core library, but that's a great way to add the JS core library. So if you're looking to do that, that's really easy. I'm just going to hit that. So what I could do in here is I would just do an npm install. So I could do that. That's going to install. Well, if I could spell install correctly, today is just things are just going really well today. So we're going to install this. Uh, note I use the save devs. So that'll leave it as a dev dependency for my little demo three project here. And that'll give it a second to get going. And I'm going to look back over here. Are there any questions here? Uh, okay. Okay, Vase is answering all these in line. This is great, making my job nice and easy. Okay, so we can actually now come in here and say import PNP from SP PNP JS. And so then um, I'm just going to put it here just to sort of as an example. Um, and then just like that, we could do stuff with the web. Um, so that's how you would include our library. So just npm install, import that, and you can begin using our REST commands as well. Um, they're not going to walk through that in the tutorial, but uh, this would be a great thing to highlight for folks who want to make their web parts uh, and show them off in the demo. would love to see how folks are using the library and how we can learn from and improve folks using the library in these sorts of SharePoint framework projects. So really excited to see what everybody can come up with. And there, I will pause and uh, just sort of open the floor to questions on generally anything, SharePoint framework uh, in particular, or uh, anything else that is on folks' minds uh, around what we've talked about today.
Or maybe everybody's already asked all their questions and Vesa's answered them all. I see some typing. Any example of hitting REST in Azure and handling cores or authentication? So for uh, we do, but not specifically in the SharePoint framework. The core stuff is handled on the server side. Uh, so you would, in your, let's say it's an MVC application, you would set a couple of properties in there that allow cores. Uh, we do have a tutorial on that. I'd have to dig up a link. In terms of the authentication, that uh, is really dependent on how you're doing auth. So if you're doing uh, Windows auth or something like that and they're already logged in, uh, it may just work. Otherwise, it depends. Um, but, but all these examples are uh, things that we really uh, are working on getting together. Um, if you have ideas, uh, certainly welcome community contributed samples for things like this. Uh, so it's uh, really, there's a lot of ground to cover and we're just in the pre-release, so that's a great idea um, and we'll, we'll do what we can to get those kind of samples out there. Um, let's see, those look like ETA on the Yammer web part. I don't know if one of those is under development currently, but that would be a great community uh, contribution. Um, Yep, uh, that's a great point from Bill, um, and I, I can mention that a little bit louder. We are encouraging folks to go to sharepoint.stackexchange.com uh, for support and questions. Uh, one, that's sort of becoming kind of the de facto place that everybody goes for answers, and it helps folks uh, who have a question or have rather the same question that's already been asked to kind of find um, that answer. So um, do encourage you to use Stack Exchange. I know the product group is actively uh, tracking that and helping uh, respond to folks. Uh, so uh, please do use Stack Exchange. It's a great point from Bill. Um, and you can, of course, bring your questions uh, to these weekly calls um, or to our community. We'll try and help as well. But uh, the more you can put stuff on Stack Exchange, the more it helps sort of the bigger community um, sort of outside uh, the folks that make these calls and things like that. And it also provides that sort of living documentation. Um, maybe the wiki part could become content in the repo. Uh, this is sort of a more specific question. Um, sure, we're open to ideas. I thought there'd be more questions on the SharePoint framework. Um, our wiki. Sorry, are you talking about the the JavaScript core wiki? Uh, sorry, no, I meant the the wiki on the um, whatever it is the uh, what, oh the SharePoint whatever it's called site. The, the, SharePoint. Site, the SharePoint framework site. There's ah, a not... uh, a wiki, but that's not editable. Um, that's, uh, yes, uh, uh, for some reason. So right now it's it's by design. Um, the the whole idea that we are in that wiki uh, or the solution is kind of awkward. It's just a temporary solution. We will be moving the documentation to dev.office.com whenever the dev.office.com slash SharePoint will be available. But there was a timing issue, uh, so we needed to get the documentation somewhere. And that's why the wiki won't be uh, opened up for anybody else to contribute. Okay. So it's only for people who are actually writing the tutorials and will be continuing doing that when it moves to dev.office.com. But issues, pull requests, suggestions, more than welcome. Uh, and we'll see well, what we're going to do in the future. This is going to be, these tutorials are going to be the official uh, tutorials in the official documentation whenever we get our final location in place. Okay, good. Will the um, uh, while I'm unmuted, will the um, Yeoman generator end up on GitHub at some point, or is that yes. going to be proprietary? Yes. Okay, that's going to be in a GitHub, and it's going to be open source fully. Uh, we're looking into getting a lot of the, the actual components in the SharePoint framework uh, as source open. Um, and some elements might uh, still be kind of uh, in quotes hidden. But the objective is to get enough uh, maturity of the stuff, actually, at least uh, source open, if not open source. 
Maybe the enterprise features will be <laughs> closed. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it actually goes. But there is a, already a design which has been decided, uh, but I can't share that. So, And there will be an opportunity and a location for community contributions, samples, documentation, and all of that as well. But it's a timing and a resourcing thing, so we need to, uh, well, like I wrote in the iron window, we're using the ENCO OTP method. If you don't know what ENCO OTP means, you can have a look on the Google, but it's, it's in simple, it's step by step. You yeah. could also use Bing. <laughs> yes, fair point. <laughs> you can, <laughs> but but uh, see, see Patrick, uh, Bing in Europe, that doesn't really match that well, unfortunately. Still, so we've been waiting ten years now for Bing to actually <clears throat> to be in a certain level. In the US, no doubt. <laughs> I, I thought it was interesting uh, reading the the kind of the um, the, the, the part of the the, the words actually in the wiki, whereas about the philosophy, the kind of design philosophy behind it, and uh, it was saying in there that the the add-in model is kind of it'll still be around, but uh, this is it kind of hinting that this is the new way forward, and I I think maybe we're moving into a phase where. Um, it's not really the job of Microsoft to, you know, and in this new world of open development and so on, it's not really Microsoft's job to tell developers how they need to build things. It's just, just create some tools, and here you are. Here are some tools, and you can use these, or you can use these other tools. Or uh, whereas, because in the past everything was proprietary and you couldn't get at it, so you needed Microsoft to tell you how to use. SharePoint because you couldn't see what was what it was doing behind the scenes exactly. Whereas now it's a different world we're living in. True, true, no doubt. And and like you mentioned, the adding model will be there. It will be fully supported. Uh, there's a a certain scenarios like if customers are looking into full security uh, and isolation uh, for external add-ins and external customizations, then the adding model is the chosen one. Uh, SharePoint framework is executed within the context of browser using the permissions of the end user. So, if that's a concern, uh, then the adding model is the option. But it's it's always debatable, and yes, there are uh, multiple options. But it's we at the moment we rather want to think that we want to enable, and then the community and customers can decide what is the right thing to do. Yeah, is this the right I, or wrong? So yeah, I, I don't think. I, I, yeah. Sorry, uh, Vesa. No, there's, there's no reason why you shouldn't have multiple options. I think probably the mistake was in the sandbox area to try and push that as the way forward. True, true. I, I agree. And, and personally, I always hate it. If, if there's any session in any conference which the title contains words, best practices, that's, <laughs> um, let's see how I put it in a, in a, in a polite way. Um, that's not accurate. That's not, um, that you cannot define best practices, period. Best practices depends on the audience and the technical skills of the team and the size of the company and development stuff. And, and there's multiple and aspects. The, and the situation. The, and the situation. The problem no you're trying to solve. Exactly, exactly. Best practices for the developing client side, developer, whatever. There's no such thing. It always depends. But I think we are gradually getting over that. So uh, less and less people are asking what is the best practice for Microsoft on doing X and Y and Z. Well, it depends. We can't answer that question. Well, now yeah, I feel like I have to change. Patterns and practices, plural. Well, yeah, so patterns and practices, I, I think that at least the, the new age patterns and practices, what we've been doing now for a few years, and the, the BMP JavaScript SIG is a good example. What we want to do is show how to get stuff done um, and how to, how to get you guys unplugged. That's really the case. It's not about some of the, the samples that we're providing are super simple, and they're intentionally simple so that they are easily approachable. So you don't have to have a PhD, which Bill probably has, if I remember correctly, <laughs> uh, to be able to understand what is the right pattern to do and what is the wrong pattern to do. That's a wrong way of thinking. Let's enable the community to do their stuff and make money and, and be successful in the Microsoft products. And then, and, and surely, surely, let's then agree together with the community what is the, the better or 
what is the, the I wouldn't say better way of doing what is the what are the options to do stuff so yeah, we, we might discover some bad practices along the way exactly so this is exactly. something to avoid yeah exactly and Patrick, you were planning to jump in at some point. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say now I feel bad. I've got to change the title of my my next presentation: the best practice, <laughs> the best practice development. <laughs> um, so Sebastian's go. got a good question. Any integration with SharePoint mobile app we can test at this point? Uh, not specifically, but if you put the web parts on a dev tenant and you point the mobile app at the dev tenant, you should be able to see them um, as you would other things. So uh, there isn't a specific API or integration point to test other than they should show up and you should be able to see them and interact with them on mobile or in the mobile app. And on that one, obviously, the, the mobile is a big, big uh, bet for us in the future, uh, including cross the cross the channel, not just Windows Phone and I, um, so iPhones and Android. So there will be guidance uh, uh, around what are those considerations when you're writing a SharePoint framework uh, solutions uh, targeted cross devices. But basically, if you follow up, the, the, if you build stuff using the framework, SharePoint framework, the one fundamental benefit out of it is that it will automatically scale. Well, it should, unless you do something really funky uh, to the mobile devices as well. And that's really the, one of the fundamental benefits out of the SharePoint framework, which we cannot do with iframes. Yeah, so. a big part of that is using that Office UI fabric for your layout. True. Because um, that's, that's what we are going to use in the product. So it'll all kind of, as it collapses and the grids do all their grid stuff, it'll all kind of flow the way you would expect. So, um, But the framework is very... Uh, mobile first, I guess, is a good buzzword to throw in there. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> um, but uh, definitely should work on mobile um, as well as phones. And we're definitely not just targeting Windows Phone. Um, we're not just for the one percent. Um, any other questions or discussion points? Let's see a few people typing. Um, like I said, uh, next week, Vesa will be your guest host. So you'll get a full hour of getting to hear uh, Vesa. You get, uh, by then, I imagine folks will have some really good detailed questions that I get to hand off to him for next week. Um, so, haha. -ha. But uh, do get out there. And uh, so, got a question. So, developers can use anything. So, we can end up with mobile pages loading React, two different versions of PMPJS, and three different versions of Angular, all trying to load on mobile? So the answer is sure. But the hope is that an organization would be a little bit more coordinated than that um, and sort of not allow that to happen, right? Um, but yeah, that's certainly possible, um, which is why we're sort of saying React is a great choice, Knockout is a great choice. Um, <clears throat> hopefully folks will keep their SP, PNP, JS up to date and use it in all their projects. Um, but so, uh, yeah, that would be a bad practice, exactly. Um, what happens if you cannot get a developer tenant? Are you stuffed? Um, I, I thought developer tenants were available. I'm not sure what the difficulty there might be. Uh, if something's down, we can check on that. I don't know, Vesa, if you have any insight, is the developer tenant that, should just be available, right? That should be. Um, so as long as you, you go and request a tenant, yeah, if the if the Chrome is having issues, open up a, a Edge or Firefox in, in an anonymous mode you absolutely should be able to request the tenant. So the only thing is that there's a small nasty limitation within the, uh, within the dev tenants. You cannot use the same email address which you've already registered in the past when your that benefits for that email address have, might have been expired. Um, it's not an optimal setup, uh, I know, but at least in my case, I do have two email addresses for my Hotmail account. Um, and I'm using my Hotmail account because uh, it's, it's pretty classic already. Um, so I do have an Outlook uh, address for my Hotmail account. So I, I've been able to register two dev tenants, uh, one for my Hotmail and one for my Outlook. And I just as well, I can go to the Gmail and register an email and register that as a as the owner for one tenant. The only thing what it actually does is that it sends a confirmation email to that 
uh, email address, you need to be able to click back so that you get the tenant. And that's it. Yep. Great. What happens uh, after the first year of the free tenant? It looks like it becomes paid. Is that going to happen? Um, I'm not actually sure what's the, uh, if it's an MSDN benefits, if you have an MSDN that's free, um, I haven't thought about that one for 10 years because I, got, uh, I have an MSDN. Um, um, I don't think we have a price for the deaf tenants. I don't know. I, I really don't I know. I thought they just shut okay. down. It might be that they're shutting down, yeah. Like after um, a and year. One, one great uh, new thing within the dev tenants, you can actually see that one already with the new dev tenants. If you request the one today, they no longer have a one account limitation. You can actually have 25. So you can actually do proper testing uh, as an end user and an administrator and a different permissions. And that's a huge, huge improvement. Indeed. Yes, I absolutely agree on that, Mike. Yeah. Great. So thanks, everyone, for attending the call, and thanks for bearing with us with a little bit of technical difficulties there at the beginning. Sorry for that. Uh, I do really want to encourage you guys, get into the new SharePoint framework, learn it, uh, give us feedback. And by us, I mean Stack Exchange or the GitHub site for the SharePoint framework. Welcome to bring your questions to these weekly calls. Uh, do write some web parts. Really want to sort of start showing those off uh, to show off, one, your work, and also kind of give the community a great source of learning and ideas on what would be possible once you kind of get into this. Like I said, at the Dev Kitchens, it was a really successful project to see all the different things that others produced. So excited to see what uh, all of you uh, will come up with. And I guess final question from Nigel there, uh, Yammer's successor, not 100% certain what we're doing yet. We're still working on figuring that out. So we'll let everyone know uh, for sure there. So thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your week and weekend. Like I said, you'll have Vesa next week as a guest host. So bring him all your hardest, most difficult questions, and then uh, really get into that SharePoint framework. Thanks, all. Thank you. Bye-bye.